I'm gonna lose it, but I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna fucking lose it, dude. If it hits crit again, I'm ending stream. All right, good, goodbye. Black Swan, five star wind, the Nihility kit via Mero. Skill, deals wind damage equal to 60% of Black Swan's... What talent level is that? Is that talent level one or 10? But okay. Uh, to 60% of Black Swan's attack to designated enemy and its adjacent targets with 100% base chance to reduce the defense of each enemy by level six, I believe. Defense down on skill. Yeah, that's kind of insane. For three turns. Defense down on skill for three? Deals wind damage equal to 96% of Black Swan's attack, power to the entire enemy team, and strengthens the target's fate card effect for two turns. Strengthen fate card reduces the target's effect resistance by 17.5%, and can be considered as any one damage over time type negative status. The fuck does that mean? Okay, whatever. L l let's go back to this one. Can I zoom in a bit? Yeah, sure. When an enemy target takes damage over time, Black Swan has a 60% base chance to apply Fate card to the target, which can be triggered four times per unit per action. The target of the Fate card will take wind damage equal to 155% of the Black Swan's attack at the beginning of each turn. That's a somewhat weak dot effect, but anyways. Fate card has a level mechanic with an initial level of 1, applying Fate card again to a target that has already had it that has already had it, increases the level of Fate Card by 1. When Fate Card deals damage at the beginning of the target's turn, it, ha it has additional effects depending on the levels. Greater than or equal to level 1. So basically, if you have it, each level additionally increases damage equal to 31% of Black Swan's attack power. So if you have multiple levels, it's basically... Like, it starts at 160 or 155, and then it goes to 186, and then it goes to 217 and so on and so forth for each level. Greater than equal to level 3 deals additional damage equal to 90% of the original damage to adjacent targets. So if, it, if it's level 3 or higher, it also becomes AoE. And if it's level 6 or higher, it gains 22% defense ignore. Destiny card. What is destiny card? Resets the level to 1 at the beginning of the target's turn after dealing damage. What is a destiny card? Huh? I think it just means fate card, but bad translation. Yeah, okay, it might be. Okay, so, okay, so basically, whenever an enemy takes a dot, she has a chance to apply a stack of her passive. And the more stacks of her passive there are, the stronger her passive becomes. It's kind of a, a recurring dot that she doesn't actually need to use anything to apply. That just That's just gonna happen whenever you apply another dot. But its level is reset to one every time it deals damage. Right, like that, that's basically how, how it is, right? And the more the more different types of damage over time effects you apply, the more different times you the enemy takes damage over time, um, the higher the level is gonna be. And then when you use ult, it makes it not reset to one. I wonder what the limit of stacks is, or the, the level limit is. I wonder if there is a level limit, probably. Is it level six? I mean, it says greater than or equal to level six, so greater than level six should be possible. So basically, this makes it so that the more different sources of damage over time you have, the stronger this damage over time effect becomes. So if you only have one other source of damage over time, this is only ever going to reach level 1, maybe level 2 with the ult. But if you start stacking different sources of damage over time, this can become a lot stronger. That is very interesting. Oh, makes it no reset for two turns. It says the effect is triggered a maximum of one time, so it would only be for one turn. Like, the... The effect resistance shred seems to stay for two turns, but the thing that prevents it from resetting seems to only be able to happen once. So that means even with Kafka, it's only going to be able to happen once. Maybe it means they can't reapply it while it's up? I don't think so. That, that, that wouldn't make sense with what's written here. Oh, this is very interesting. And then her technique. After using the secret technique, draw one fate crystal of either physical, fire, lightning, or wind that you don't already hold up to a maximum of four. So basically, when you use your skill, it chooses an element, either physical, fire, lightning, or wind. And you can use it up to four times to get all four if you want. And when you enter battle, you will apply the weakness break effect related to that element to each enemy. So if you get all four, then you can apply bleed, burn, shock, and wind shear to the enemy. That's very interesting. 
It's like an incentive to use the, your technique multiple times on one character. That, I think that's really cool. I'm gonna be honest though, this thing, Trace 2, when casting basic attack, blocks one, regenerates question mark energy. Boy, I'm kind of scared of how much, how what, what the number on this is gonna be. And when you use your skill, you have a chance to apply your fate card effect. These are, this is a very interesting kit, I think. I think the most broken part of it is the de death shred on skill. Because what that means, chat, is that you can very, very... Because it's 100% base gen, so, like, you can build enough effect hit rate that it's guaranteed. You can very, very... And it lasts three turns. You can very, very reliably give Kafka the event Light Cone. If you use Kafka with Black Swan, you know what that means. That means an ult every two... Every two skills on Kafka. Which is kind of insane. Like, I was, I was thinking about it a lot, and it, it's pretty difficult to fit... A, like, dedicated Death Shredder in a Kafka team. Um, and I was leaning towards just putting Pearls of Sweat on Shampoo. But because I don't have... I don't have a high refine on Pearls of Sweat, then it's not going to be particularly reliable. And it only lasts for one turn, so, like, the timings are going to be sus. But with this, you can make, you can get it very, very reliably. I think that's unironically the most broken part of her kit. Like, yeah, she has a very strong damage over time effect. Of, like, of course, like, it's pretty good. But I don't actually think... Like, a character having damage over time, like, that's just... Okay, because she's a damage over time character, of course she does, right? I think that this def Death Shred is actually so nice. I do Black Swan with Serval and Shampoo. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, it could be. All right, if you get three dots... If you get if you get Fate Card plus uh, Shampoo's Wind Shear plus Serval's Shock, it's going to be level three. Which means that her dot is going to be AoE. Wait a second. If you apply the dot to two different targets, and it's level 3 on both different targets, does it, like, feed back into itself? Do you get to deal 190% of the original dot? Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? It's not actually quadratic, because you can only have one character, like, on each side, right? It, it actually it has a limit. But still, that's interesting. That is very interesting. That's an interesting kit. I kind of like it. Alright, who was the other one? Runmei kit. Okay. Increase Runmei's speed by X percent and increase Runmei's ally's speed by X percent, which lasts for X turns. Ah, uh, well, that's not very clear. Like, I, I have no idea how good this is. Does it increase it by 3% or by 89%? Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's too... There's, there, there can be too much too much variance on how, how strong this is, depending on the numbers. Buff all allies for X turns. So the weakness break efficiency of all allies buffed with the enchantment will increase by X%. percent. Ooh, I wonder how much this is. Okay, here's the thing about weakness break efficiency. Getting 10% weakness break efficiency is completely fucking dog shit useless. You need to reach certain breakpoints for it to be good, right? E like, even 30% even isn't always that great. You kind of want, like, 35, well, 34, 33.4 for it to actually be very significant. But if it actually goes to 35, then it's very good. Merlin Impact on Twitter gives all leaks. Are, are there numbers on this? When the weakness shield of an enemy target is broken, they'll be affected by Broken Plum Blossom. It will be activated when the enemy target recovers weakness break, extending the target's weakness break, and delaying its action. Extending the target's weakness break? What is that supposed to mean? Does that mean that the weakness break, like, dot, has one more turn or something? Oh, or does that mean that when when once they have their turn, they don't regenerate their weakness? Is that is that what it means? Like, there's still weakness broken. I see. So this would synergize with things that have bonuses when the enemy's weakness broken, like Su Shang. Interesting. When an ally hits an enemy with weakness break, damage dealt will be increased. After casting technique, all allies attack will increase at the start of the next battle. Traces. When all allies hit a target with weakness break, broken plum blossom will be applied onto the enemy. Wait, what? Huh? Wait, that could be really good. When Ronmei's turn begins, immediately we generate one energy. Or X energy, sorry. Well, that, again, right, it's hard to say how good that is. When Ronmei's attack reaches X, the talent damage increase effect will be increased by a further X percent. I mean, it's a cool kit, but without the numbers, it's really hard to say how good this is. You can't get any changes, not as far as I know. There was also... Aventurin? I see. 
Let's take a look. Um... Provides all ally with an exclusive shield capable of absorbing damage equal to whatever. The shield can come with a random suit lasting for whatever. When they use skill again, it will refresh any suit except spade. Huh? Randomly gain one to X points of energy? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I'm alright. I'm good, thanks. That's okay. Okay.